It is a story making headlines across the country. You can see right here the disappearance of 22 year old Gabby Petito is front page news all over. This is our Fox station right here in Salt Lake City. This one is coming to you from Tampa here. A boyfriend named person of interest in the Gabby Petito case also in WNBC in New York City. Here's the headline here. Where is Gabby? Certainly big news around the country. And those headlines being updated because we're now learning today Petito's fiance now a person of interest in her disappearance as family anxiously waits in Vero Beach. WPTV News Channel 5's Megan McRoberts got her hands on a police report showing tension between the couple weeks before the young woman's disappearance. We don't know what Brian knows. I mean, that's the bottom line. And uh, we were, we're hopeful to talk to him. He needs to talk to us. Northport police say Gabby Petito's fiance, Brian Laundrie, is staying tight lipped, not showing where he last saw Gabby or giving any clues as to where she could be after she disappeared following a month long van trip touring national parks. You hope she comes home, but you don't want to help. You, we can't talk. Well, then you don't really want to help. Frustration shared by Gabby's father in Vero Beach, desperate to get Gabby home. Police said she was last seen in late August at Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. But now we know police encountered them at least a week before in Moab, Utah. This newly released police report says Moab City Police were called out to a co-op when someone saw Gabby and her fiance arguing. Gabby slapping him while he grabbed her face to push her away and try to lock her out of the van, though she eventually got inside. Police caught up to them and said Gabby was, quote, crying uncontrollably, but said they loved each other and didn't want anyone to get charged. Laundry told police he and Gabby had issues that were building after traveling together for four to five months, creating an emotional strain and an increased number of arguments. Police got Laundry a hotel room for the night so they could have space to take care of their mental health. I think everybody in this country apparently is concerned for Gabby's well-being. Police say at this point they can't force Laundry to cooperate. But they did take the van into evidence, which she drove back to Northport on September 1st with no sign of Gabby. It was parked at Laundry's parents' home where he lives with Gabby. There was some material in there that we'll be going through. I don't know that we're at a situation of releasing all of those details. Now police, with the help of the FBI, are using every tool available, tracking phones, apps, financials, highway cameras, and tolls until they get answers, even if Laundry and his attorney don't open up. They put out a release yesterday saying they remain in the background. That is not good enough. We need the details. Megan McRoberts, WPTV News Channel 5. We have some rain on the radar, but most of it is on the west coast of Florida. A new flood advisory for around the Clewiston area. And a few showers have been popping up around Bell Glade and Pahokee and around the South Bay area, but those won't last long. They're pushing off to the west quite at the coastline and the Treasure Coast and Palm Beach County looking pretty good. Temperatures are in the high mid and high 80s and will cool off into the 70s for your overnight lows. The hour by hour forecast looks nice. We have uh, a little bit of rain around the lake that, as I said, won't last long and then uh, eventually 70s everywhere. Now we're still watching what is now the last advisory on Nicholas, a uh, big rainmaker now for the panhandle. There's several other tropical waves out there that we're keeping an eye on. One has a very high chance of developing more on that and the weekend forecast coming up. Steve, thank you as always. A family in the Glades has been hit hard by coronavirus in just three weeks time. Six family members lost their short battles with COVID-19. WPTV News Channel 5's Ryan Hughes is in Bell Glade where loved ones are opening up and encouraging people to get vaccinated. Lisa Wilson is an aide for Palm Beach County Commissioner Melissa McKinley and her husband is the mayor of Bell Glade. For months, she went door to door educating people about the COVID-19 vaccine. She even called her family members almost daily, but now she only wishes that they would have listened. Over the past three weeks, Lisa has lost six members of her family from the virus. Her uncle, Tyrone Moreland, he died at the end of August. Two days later, her grandmother, Lily Mae Dukes Moreland, was hospitalized and died about 24 hours later. Then Lisa lost four cousins. All of them were unvaccinated. She says they were scared and believed the misinformation that they read online. But while on their deathbed, they regretted not getting the shot. And now Lisa is sharing her painful story, hoping others will listen and will get vaccinated. You can't grieve the death of one because then the next day or two, you know, somebody else has passed away. So it's, it's been really, really, really hard to comprehend and, and try to to figure this all out. I need for everybody to hear this message. 
you know, I don't trade place with me and my family what we're going through. It's not a good feeling. And the mayor of Belle Glade says the city is continuing its outreach by posting signs around the area telling people to listen to the facts. And he says he will continue to advocate for everyone to get the shot. In Belle Glade, Ryan Hughes, WPTV, News Channel 5. Right now in Florida, over 49,000 deaths from COVID have been reported. The number of cases in Florida, over 3,464,000. That's an increase of 10,723 cases. These new numbers come in this evening from the CDC. Pfizer is making its case for booster shots. The FDA just released Pfizer's data today. Research from Israel and the United States show that protection wanes starting around six to eight months after someone is fully vaccinated and that a booster would be needed around that time frame. This data takes the Delta variant into account. The new information is coming just days before an FDA committee decides whether boosters should be made available in the United States. Please get updates on the coronavirus pandemic on air and on our free WPTV News app. We also have a section of our website dedicated to our coverage, WPTV.com slash coronavirus. The Miami star known as Mr. 305 has the 561 on his mind. Pitbull is publicly supporting an effort to save the old Palm Beach Speedway. WPTV News Channel 5's Matt Sesney tells us about the singer's pitch to save the track. This was Pitbull at the 2018 Sunfest. Now the singer's interest stretches out on the Beeline Highway at this raceway. When Pitbull speaks, People listen. Former Indy 500 champion Danny Sullivan is talking about Pitbull's support behind an online effort to keep the cars racing at the Palm Beach International Speedway. The for sale sign out front with a 305 number now has Mr. 305 himself pushing for the one competing bid to turn the track into a racing tourist attraction. We ran an Indy car here. I drove a Le Mans car here. Sullivan, who says he used the raceway as a test track in his racing days, is also behind the online petition, an effort he says that could turn the track into something like what Wellington has done with the horse community. This is an area that has a tremendous amount of car collectors around. Believe it or not, where we're sitting right now, there's five race shops within 30 minutes of where we're sitting. The old track has a nostalgic hold on many besides professional drivers. Jupiter Councilman and Vice Mayor Cameron May says he used to race his car here as a teen. It started at the age of 16. So uh, if you're under the age of 18, you had to have a signed waiver from your parents. And so uh, my dad was quick to sign it. My mom was a little reluctant. Ultimately, the future of this raceway will come down to a private business deal. Yet many hope that a celebrity like Pitbull can influence a new future here. In Palm Beach County, Matt Sesney, WPTV News Channel 5.